Kaur Tayana, and we are the co-founders of the Open Restitution Africa Project. Restitution and return was happening very much in kind of like specialist circles, uh, but what was trickling down into the public domain was really defined by foreign press, or it wasn't the narrative that we defined. And we thought we should come up with an explainer video series that really targets people who've never heard of restitution before, uh, but are interested in knowing what it's about and um, what's happening now, where we're going. So this, what, whatever you see here is the beginning. It's an introduction. So whatever feelings you will have, because you will have a lot of feelings, <laughs> please keep that in mind. and awareness is really about trying to ensure that um, there is much more of a conversation happening on the African continent for the African continent about restitution. So we've identified uh, through research that we've done major gaps in the ways in which restitution is being engaged with and the fact that Africans aren't being given enough space to really drive the conversation. And so our advocacy and awareness work is really focused on this. It's also focused on ensuring that um, particularly younger people from the continent, um, people who are not necessarily within the space of, say, museums and heritage, are also a little bit more informed about the restitution conversation because there just is so little publicly in available information that really gives a bigger picture of what restitution is about, what are the main questions, and most importantly, what is it that Africans really want. Open Data Platform is intended to create um, more information to sort of unearth more information about restitution and particularly to um, make accessible information about restitution processes. So how many people have asked for something to be restituted? Uh, what has been the response? How has that response been engaged with? Uh, what are the next steps that have then been undertaken in cases where there has been um, finally a positive response? Um, and what does it mean when uh, restitution processes result in return and return back to the African continent? And what then happens on the African continent with these returned either possessions or human ancestors? What makes Open Restitution Africa unique is that the focus on restitution projects, on restitution knowledge has been very much about the relationship between Europe and Africa and a focus on returning objects. And what we found in terms of exploring case studies is that return is just like literally the tip of the iceberg. There are questions around how restitution is happening, who is involved, where are the resources coming from? What is the value of returning these things? What does restitution even look like? Is it intangible? Is it tangible? Is it physical? Is it spiritual? Is it, you know, there's all these kind of unanswered questions and unexplored questions that sit behind restitution processes. And I think our project is unique is because we're focusing on those kind of questions and also centering African responses to those questions so that we are building towards the pursuit of a restitution that is framed by Africans for Africans. In terms of restitution processes, there isn't necessarily a template for how one should research or explore this subject area. And so we as Open Restitution Africa were faced with a challenge in terms of what methodology we could use to start surfacing this knowledge and specifically within an African context. And we needed a methodology that was robust, that was responsive to complexity, that tested questions of power in knowledge production 
and also generated data that was rooted in people's perspectives and experiences within the continent. Um, and based on our exploration with our existing researchers as well as the, the academics and scholars that we consulted with, we started to hinge our methodology around three key areas and that was case study, it was um, grounded methodology and it was also oral history methodology. The grassroots approach that we took as Open Restitution Africa to this research was important for us to, to consider because it's, it was important for multiple voices or multiple perspectives to emerge and to be highlighted and to be foregrounded, particularly because for the longest time restitution cases have been centered from, an, from a European perspective or a Western perspective. So we really wanted to really capture what is happening on the ground, who are the people that are doing the actual work that hasn't been so visible as compared to or compared to um, Western perspectives. And how we've gathered data in this way um, has offered us a way of decentralizing knowledge production. It's offered us a way of really centering African voices. Um, and again, just going back to this idea of showcasing the agency of communities, showcasing the agency of individuals who are doing restitution work. So we wanted to not take a top-down approach to it, but to understand who are the, the people who are dealing with the practicalities of it on a daily basis. history methodologies you're focusing on people's perspectives, people's memories, people's experiences and that's what drives the research agenda and on the other side of that is that you have to disrupt your positionality as a neutral participant within the research. You have to allow people's experiences to lead what you interpret of that subject area and so oral history has been a really important space for us to be able to disrupt the power issues that we've seen around restitution knowledge as well. So some of the things that we've really had to think about um, in terms of how we sort of build the systems, the digital systems in particular that we're using, um, is to think uh, from, for example, indigenous knowledge systems, to think from the perspective of oral history, um, to try to redefine even for ourselves how we uh, think and speak and imagine the possessions and human ancestors that are intended to be restituted. Uh, so much of how they exist has been defined. The, the reason they exist as objects in museums is because of a structure of uh, collection, of uh, war often, um, of a kind of really problematic relationship between uh, particularly Europe and Africa. And so if that is kind of the world that these objects were made in, how do we work on these same issues but try not to replicate those same problematics? So how do we then move from a position of repair? Um, how do we uh, create metadata systems, um, data stewardship frameworks, uh, research methodologies that really try to um, unpack that problem and then build new ways of doing it. And so the work has been incredibly challenging, um, but I think because of that, really fascinating and really rewarding. We're asking ourselves how can various stakeholders use this data, um, whether we're talking about museum activists, whether we're talking about policy makers, artists, um, people working in the legal sector. Uh, we imagine that this data is going to be useful in so many ways um, that we ourselves have probably not even anticipated and that for us is success. For someone to sit with the data to interpret something new 
um, and to use it within the context um, of their realities and their uh, profession. What does the future look like for us as Africans, as members of the Aura team? It's exciting, uh, it's promising, it's dynamic, and finally it's groundbreaking.